Where's my camera? Right there? Yes, right above, well, almost okay. above Mary. Okay, you ready? Yep. Away. Good morning, residents of Bellingham, and uh, welcome to our 10 a.m. briefing. Uh, today is April 23rd in 2020, and my name is Don Martinez. I'm with the Bellingham Board of Selectmen. Uh, this morning, we've got a couple of special guests, Marjorie Turner and, um, and Gina from Owen Financial Tax. But first, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Deputy Chief Corey to give us an update on the numbers. Deputy? Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, in Massachusetts, we have uh, 42,944 cases, and we have 2,182 deaths uh, as of yesterday. Uh, in the U.S., we have 849,092 cases, and we have 47,681 deaths with 84,050 recovered. Thank you. Great, great. Now I'd like to turn it over to Esther to give us uh, an update. Esther is the health nurse for Bellingham. Good morning. So as of this morning, we have had a total of 199 residents in Bellingham tested with 61 total confirmed cases. 32 current cases, 27 recovered, and two deaths. And I apologize, someone walked by, so the dogs went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That, that's the new norm for us, Esther. It's quite all right. Thank you very much. It's live TV, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> so we try to keep this a little bit light. Um, this morning, we're, we're met with, uh, we have a couple of guests, and I'd like to talk, turn it over to Marjorie Turner. Uh, Marjorie is a personal historian. Um, she loves the outdoors, and Marjorie's going to share with us some of the things that she's been doing um, during this difficult time. Marjorie? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me, Marjorie Turner Holman, the personal historian who loves the outdoors. And I've been really busy right now with social media. Um, uh, people, because of the quarantine, anytime you tell people not to do something, they want to do it. And so if people haven't been active, they've been couch potatoes, all of a sudden they're, they're wanting to run a marathon. And, um, and so people who've never been out on uh, local trails suddenly think that nature is the most wonderful thing. They can't go shopping, they can't go dining outdoor, out. And so what do you do? You go on to local trails, but they're not really very well equipped. And so, um, there's a couple of venues. I have a Facebook page called Easy Walks in Massachusetts that I've been trying to share information. Uh, because of the overwhelming response of the public to getting outdoors, uh, trails have really been suffering. They're not, they're not equipped to have this quantity of traffic as it were, and uh, people aren't necessarily keeping social distances as well, even as they're being told to be safe. So, um, so the response has been from a number of stakeholders to close these trails because people have been unable or unwilling to control their attendance. Uh, parking lots have been overfilled. Uh, dog poop bags are getting left. There's no staff to clean up. So, um, so that's kind of kept me busy um, trying to keep up with trail closures. Uh, a few places like Trustees of the Reservation have properties out in the Upper Charles uh, watershed area, which is near us, Millis and Medfield properties have actually gotten opened um, temporarily to see if people will refrain from abusing that, um, that privilege. So um, the, the West Hill Dam over in Uxbridge is closed. Um, for right now, state properties like Riverbend Farm are open, um, but there's still the, how do you maintain social distances? One of the, one advice that I'm giving people, um, it's real easy to sleep in when you don't have a bus to catch and you don't have jobs that you have to commute to. So not that many of us are getting up as early, but if you want to avoid crowds and get outdoors when not many people are gonna be there, head out early. And, and that's something I've been urging people and, and when they followed this advice, gotten feedback back that um, indeed that was true. There's not that many people out early morning. 
uh, supper time is your other option if people are headed in to eat. And so there are not as many people out. It's a little easier to maintain that social distance. That's so those are, the, those are some of the things besides um, working on finishing up my other, some of my other hats with writing of um, trying to get the last details on the Bellingham 300th book finished up. It really is just about ready to go to printers and we've been really uh, anxiously anticipating that finishing up. Thank you so much, Jim, for your help. Just last little fact finding stuff drives me crazy, but we're nearly there and I, it's going to be a fun read and uh, interesting. You will see the community different after you read some of these stories. So that's been a real privilege to be able to help write some of that. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. When, when do you expect it to be published? In a uh, I, I'm hopeful it, within the next couple of weeks. Um, the, it's in design phase right now, so that's, that's basically out of my hands until um, Pam Johnson, who's a designer, has been coming back to me saying, what about this? And we're proofing at this point. So right. it's, it's nearly there, then it's just gonna require going to the printer. Uh, she may have even uploaded the, um, the PDF right now for online printing. Uh, a lot of people pre-bought books and mm -hmm. now the next problem will be distribution. Yes, so, I was gonna ask that next. What's your plan? Do you have a plan for distribution? <laughs> I, I would I would defer that to Bernadette. So you need to have okay. Bernadette Re Rivard come on and tell you about that. She's really been chairing the committee of four of us who've run that whole. Okay. The four of us have worked. Uh, Cecily Christensen, Pam Johnson, Bernadette, and I have have been a, a small, tight, and very functional as opposed to some committees we know, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, it, it's been really a privilege to work on that. I see the community differently for the things that I've learned. Sounds so like it'll be great. It will read. be available on Amazon as soon as it's gotten printed, and and so people will be able to purchase it online. Um, but for those of us who have bought copies before, I am not sure what the best procedure is, and Bernadette will have that answer. Okay, fantastic. That's great. Thank you very much for your update. Um, and I love the, I love the, um, the idea about getting out early, you know, 7 or 7.30 in the morning yes, to walk. Um, exactly. I, you know, I think everyone tends to sleep in a little bit later, like you said. I know that I do, but uh, You've motivated me a little bit now to get up and get out earlier. So thank you very much. We have some nice properties right in town that aren't used. I, I hesitate to even say to say, here's where everyone will end up going. Um, I have a whole bunch of blogs of places to go that are on my MarjorieTurner.com blog of, of uh, easy walks. Well, I will definitely get to your Facebook page uh, today. So look for me to. It, uh, ask for an invitation. Um, great, wonderful. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So, so next we have Jean uh, Owen. Uh, Jean Owen is with Owen um, FinTax. And uh, Jean, we'd like to thank you very much for joining today. Let uh, love to hear a, a little bit about what you've been doing, especially I've got some questions around, you know, stimulus checks and tax uh, tax preparation, the dates. If you could confirm the dates. So, Jean, turning it over to you. Gene, is Gene with us? Are you on mute, Gene? She's just been unmuted, but uh, okay, not sure. Well, um, well, Gene's not here, so I think well, if Gene joins us, we'll give her a chance to to. She just came back. Now she's on mute, but she just loves technology. Mm -hmm. Hey, Gene, this is Don Martinez. Welcome. No, oh, we're having some technical we're having difficulty. Some technical difficulty. So sorry. So I think we'll move on. Um, and as part of the <clears throat> ten o'clock um, meeting that we have, we also we field some questions that come in uh, from our citizens here in Bellingham. And uh, the first question, and I'd like to address the uh, this to to Jim Kupfer, uh, if we could. Uh, Jim, the question really, I'm going to just paraphrase it. 
Uh, now that the curve has been flattening somewhat, but I'm not sure if it is in Bellingham, the numbers are going up a little bit based upon today's numbers. What, what are some of the plans for reopening businesses in the town of Bellingham? If you could address that, uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. Sure, Don, thank you. Um, so yeah, I agree, I agree with your, uh, your statement uh, initially that it sounds like we're getting close. I, I know we get, a, we get a lot of updates from our public health nurse and our board of health and many others every day uh, we're watching intently uh, in hopes to completely flatten this curve and then get back, get back to uh, our, our regular life and our economy back up and running. Uh, but we're not quite there yet, uh, but that doesn't mean we're, we're sitting on our hands. Uh, we're watching the state intently uh, to see if they will lift that uh, stay at home order uh, and when uh, non or what they define as non-essential businesses uh, can get back up and running. Uh, in the meantime, we've established a committee uh, locally here uh, to see if there's any opportunities for those businesses not expressly prohibited from opening uh, to open uh, any ways we can assist in technical assistance. And we've been, uh, you know, uh, advocating for some businesses to uh, have an opportunity to open in obviously a safe manner. Um, but, uh, you know, we are strategizing with our deputy fire chief and, and many others um, to strategically open when the time is right. And uh, we're hoping that it's, it's near term, not, uh, not, not far term. Jim, great, thank you. And, and just before I ask Esther uh, her question, I know there's been uh, a lot of information out there since last evening about the new mask policy uh, and gloves, and we're going to address that. But I first wanted to tee up and ask a question of Esther about, Esther, if you could just kind of just um, provide us with some background on um, when and how decisions are made about the mask. Where does the information, um, where do you get your information um, from when decisions and discussions around protective gear, masks, et cetera, are, are asked to be in place? So most of the information is coming directly from the CDC and their guidelines and recommendations. And then of course, the, the top health, for, health experts in the field as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So folks, I, I'm sure you, some of you that are on and listening have, have heard the news about a, an order that's um, placed by the, the Board of Health. And we wanted to kind of give you a little background and we're gonna, I'm gonna talk, bring in Deputy Chief uh, Forge to talk about it. But I just want you to understand that from the point of view from, from Bellingham is that our main priority um, is, to, is to protect the citizens, um, residents of Bellingham and also surrounding towns and your loved ones. And it's a very challenging time for all of us. And information, you know, I myself personally have spoken with uh, Bruce Wilson, the Board of Health on several times. I'll report in when I go to a local store and I'm not gonna mention their names. It's not fair for me to mention their names, but some of the grocery stores in town or small markets in town, the employees are not wearing protective gear. Uh, they're not wearing masks, they're not wearing gloves. Um, many residents inside aren't either, and, and that may very well be uh, because they don't have access to them. We, I really can't um, give you specific reasons, but it, it, it is with kind of a heavy heart that the town has um, put this order in. It, it doesn't come lightly. Um, so we're, I wanted to ask the, um, yeah, Dr. Poria. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I feel like you're a doctor <laughs> here. Um, but Deputy Chief Poria, to kind of give us a little bit more background in, in the importance of wearing protective masks uh, and gloves. You see, I have gloves, I put my mask over here. I don't go anywhere without it. And I shop for my in-laws, I shop for their friends, et cetera. So I believe, and I'm very, I'm, I'm safe. My family's safe. And I think it's very important. So, Deputy Chief. So some of the things that, uh, that, that we look for in the fire department, when, when you call us to, for an emergency or you're not feeling well, we're asking that you put on a mask. Uh, we're going to show up with a mask. We're gonna show up with an extra mask to give to you. And that's just not for our protection, it's for, it's for the, the, the sick person's uh, protection also. Mm -hmm. So, and what we're looking for is to eliminate, this is a uh, airborne disease. So what we're looking for is to eliminate the spread of the virus through droplets. Mm -hmm. uh, as everyone's speaking, there are droplets that, uh, that come out of your mouth constantly. 
And what you're looking for is to either keep social distancing, what they're saying is six feet, uh, to eliminate those droplets getting to your airway. And uh, with a mask, that eliminates those droplets from traveling. They also still say to maintain that six feet. So mask, gloves, wiping things down, and as, as we always say, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. So that those are important messages to make sure that they're out. I mean, you see them every day on the yeah. TV, but sometimes it, it helps to just continuously spread the word. Yeah, no, and I couldn't agree more. And personally, I'll say that I wear a mask going into the grocery stores and gloves. And, and the reason why I do is that the aisles in some of these grocery stores are narrow and you're, <clears> you're fighting the carriage between the employees stocking the shelves, other people trying to get down past, and it's almost impossible, even in some of the grocery stores with the widest of aisles, to stay six feet apart. It's really difficult. So to take that extra measure and to wear the mask and the gloves, I think is, 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 is the first priority. Protect yourselves and protect others around you. Because as I say, I go to the grocery store once a week and it's for not just for myself, but mm -hmm. it's for elderly family members and elderly friends. It's almost impossible to stay six feet away. So either you don't go to the grocery store, which you know you can't do, but you have to do something to protect yourself. And I go so far as to wiping all of my groceries down before I bring them in the house. I throw away those disposable bags or recycle them. And I wash, you know, I take my gloves off, take my mask off, and I don't bring some of that stuff into my own house. My wife is, has asthma and she's compromised breathing, so I, I really need to protect her. Um, is there anything else that you can add no. to what I might be doing? Am I, am I not doing enough? Should I be doing more? Am I doing too much? You know, people say, oh, Don, you're overdoing it. Actually, no, Don, you're, you're, you're not overdoing it by all means. I think you're following all the guidelines that are, that are being uh, presented to us yeah. from the CDC, from the governor, uh, all his professionals that are out there. Um, that's exactly what you should be doing, Wash, washing your hands. Um, make sure you decontaminate all the packaging. Uh, and, and yeah, throw those paper bags away that, that you know, uh, as, as Esther has stated several times that uh, you're looking at a 24 hour um, contamination on paper goods. Yeah, so, so, um, that's a good so, so those are very good practices that you're doing and uh, you should continue. So uh, knowing that an, an order was uh, put out by the Board of Health and, and we are in support of our, our, our Board of Health to a certain degree. And uh, I mean, we feel it's very important to be wearing protect masks. I, I thought that I'd draw everyone's attention to our website where the uh, the Town of Bellingham Board of Health emergency order to require masks or facial coverings in certain public places. This will be placed on the website. So uh, I would expect you to go out. You may have heard some information out of the news. I will say that, as you know, the news likes to sensationalize and take sound bites out of long interviews they have to cut it down and they try to take the most dramatic pieces of information um, one that will stimulate people to twitter to facebook um, to all the social media outlets because they want to draw the more they draw the more they uh, bring people to their sites the more advertising they sell so let's just face it news is sensational it's 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 what happens so um, i just say that uh, mr wilson bruce wilson had a long interview was explained everything in detail, um, and they took bits and pieces of information to make us look like, uh, quite frankly, that we don't know what we're doing and we're enforcing some martial law. Our plan is not to arrest people if they're not wearing protective masks. Our order is to protect the citizens and residents of Bellingham and those who work in the town of Bellingham. And I, I wanna take a few minutes and I'm gonna read, and it's two pages, and I'm gonna read it slowly, and I suggest after I read it, you go to our website and you read it for yourself, okay? And then we'll field questions over the following days. So April 22nd, 2020, the Town of Bellingham Board of Health emergency order to require mask or facial coverings in certain public places. The Town of Bellingham Board of Health, pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, chapter 111, 95 through 105 in the board's authority to prevent the spread of infectious disease deems that the following action is necessary to protect the public health. Whereas the coronavirus COVID-19 is a highly contagious 
and potentially fatal respiratory disease, the prevalence of which is increasing rapidly throughout the world, inclusive of the United States and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and as indicated in Bellingham, Massachusetts, whereas the Center of Disease Control has advised the spread of the disease from person to person is caused by close, within six feet, or actual personal contact, and through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs of sneezes, and that people potentially can spread the disease even before they experience symptoms. And whereas evidence indicates that workers in essential services workplaces such as supermarkets, grocery stores, convenience stores, restaurants offering takeout food and other facilities where the public has general access are especially susceptible to the transmission of the disease. And whereas the Center for Disease Control, the United States Surgeon General, the National Institute Allergy and Infectious Diseases, among other federal and state medical authorities, have recommended that individuals wear masks or other suitable facial covering to prevent individuals from infecting others. And whereas these recommendations observe that covering an individual's nose and mouth can reduce the chance of spreading the virus, as well as reduce the likelihood that an individual will touch their face. And whereas the Town of Bellingham Board of Health recognizes additional measures are necessary to prevent a reduced activities that increase the likelihood of the spread of a highly contagious infectious disease. And whereas the state of emergency declared in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and in the town of Bellingham warrant emergency measures to prevent the spread of the infectious disease. The town of Bellingham Board of Health hereby orders that one, all persons over the age of five wear a mask or some of suitable covering over their nose and mouth, a homemade mask, a scarf, a bandana, or a handkerchief whenever entering the inside of any building open to the public or using public transportation, taxis, or ride shares, or engaged in any activity within a confined or enclosed facility where other members of the public are present or have routine access. Two, every store, workplace or other facility providing essential services and open to the public is required to place a sign no smaller than eight and a half inches by 11 inches and clearly visible on all doors and point of entry into the facility stating that the use of a mask or a facial covering is required for every person upon entry in the facility and at all times while the facility a facility may impose stricter guidelines as it sees fit so the facility itself can impose stricter guidelines, just to be clear, and we would expect them to do so. Every store, workplace, or other facility subject to this order is also required to wear a mask or some form of suitable covering over their nose and mouth, a homemade mask, a scarf, a bandana, or handkerchief, would ever engage in any activity within a confined or enclosed facility where other members of the public are present and have access. Folks, I'm just going to pause here because, as I said earlier, I've been into several stores throughout the town of Bellingham and other towns. And what's very disturbing to me is when I see a deli worker behind the deli cutting meat. I'm not taking that meat. Um, and, and they're not wearing protective gear. That is not a good business policy. And that's all I'm going to say. And, and this is part of this order is to protect you. Okay, every store, workplace, or other facility subject to this order is authorized to refuse service to any person who fails or refuses to wear a mask or other facial form while in such facility and is further authorized to expel such person from the facility. So let me emphasize here, this doesn't mean you need to have one of these masks, okay? What it means is you have a scarf, you have a handkerchief, you might even have a winter hat or something. If you can just put something over your nose and your mouth when entering the store, that would help stop the spread of this crazy disease. Any person entering onto any store, workplace, or other facility, and any person remaining in such store, workplace, or facility who declines or refuses to wear a mask or such other facial covering as required by this order shall be deemed a trespasser upon the property and may be subject to arrest and civil or criminal prosecution. 
I'll pause here, folks. Our, our plan is not to go out to arrest people. There's no way that we have a police force that's ready to do that. However, there's strong language in here. Maybe you're a bit too strong, okay? And I'll just say that, and that's a personal opinion. Just that's my personal opinion. But it's really at what I call a shot over the bow, okay? Just to say, listen, we're taking this serious. We hope you do too. Social distancing of six feet shall be adhered to while inside the store, workplace, or other facility. Clear markings of such distance shall be visible for persons entering such premises. Food establishments, stores, and other essential workplaces will only be permitted to do following as, as follows. Drive through a curbside takeout. It's happening throughout the town. It seems to be working. Counter service will require the following. Plexiglass, sneeze guard shields will be placed at countertop to prevent airborne transmission. I've seen all of our grocery stores in town adhere to that policy a long time ago. No permitting customers to bring their own bags, mugs, or reusable items from home. I believe that's been in place for some time. Make disinfecting wipes and hand sanitizers available. I see them everywhere. This is nothing new. This is just part of the order. Disinfect all payment portals, pens, high contact services, and styluses after use. This order does not apply to persons who are engaged in permissible outdoor activities, riding in personal vehicles, alone in separate, single space or indoors, with their own shelter groups such as family or household members, although every such person is advised that the use of a mask or facial covering is encouraged. In addition to this order, the Bellingham Board of Health hereby reaffirms its updated order clarifying the operation of essential business during the declared COVID-19 state of emergency issued April 8, 2020. So folks, just I'm going to end right there because it gets into a bunch of other stuff. But we just wanted to make sure that you heard the order, that you weren't listening to the sensationalism on Channel 5. I do apologize personally that you heard about it there first and not here first. However, things like this do happen. Information leaks to the media all the time. We can't control the media. So if you have any questions, the town is here to support your, your questions. You can call us. You can email us. We'll do our best to respond as quickly as possible. Uh, Deputy, do you have anything to add? Uh, not, not to this uh, document, no. Okay. Um, Esther, Esther, do you have anything to add? Thank you. Esther, do you have anything to add to what I just uh, read? Anything you'd like to say? No, I mean, the, the biggest thing to remember is there are a lot of people who have absolutely no symptoms and are testing positive, and we don't know who these people are. The, the masks and the facial coverings really does inhibit them from transmitting the virus to others. It really is for the protection of all of the residents here in town. Okay, great. Um, our email address is uh, COVID-19 at BellinghamMA.org if you have any questions for us or check out our website. And in, and in closing, as usual, um, if you have any COVID-19 uh, questions for the state, you can dial 211. And if you have any questions or concerns regarding your workplace, you can call the Mass Attorney Generals at 617-727-3465. I want to thank all the, the residents of Bellingham for listening in. <clears throat> And I want you all to know that you know, there's nothing more. We just want you to be safe. We want you to feel safe um, in your own home. We want you to feel safe in the town of Bellingham. And if you're in need of anything, please reach out to the town. Thank you. Thank you.